Good day, fellow investors. Can this index fund bubble get bigger, bigger and bigger? If we look at the market over the last 40 years, it just went up, up and up. Now we have a little dip, but if we listen to the index fund mantra, these dips are normal, you just have to survive them and then stocks will continue going nothing but up. Just accumulate, don't worry about anything and keep doing what you're doing. But then the Dark Knight perfectly commented, if everybody thinks the same, I might start thinking maybe it is not right. Maybe this index fund bubble will pop at some time. And something very important here that we haven't yet discussed is index funds, passive investments. Let me show you when this all started. The Vanguard Group was founded in 1975. Fidelity, active management earlier. Charles Schwab, 1971, then boomed later, and the BlackRock has been founded only in 1988. Let's look about the environment. So since those were founded, survived, stocks have been going nothing but up, right? So that's one. If we look at interest rates, federal funds rates have been going nothing but down, which made them really into great businesses. And if we look at their expectations now, BlackRock says that decades of growth ahead in ETFs and index investing are awaiting them. Assets under management will double in five years and then just continue as there is just growth, growth ahead. But if we look at what Seth Klarman said already in 1990 in the Margin of Safety book, subscribe as I will make a detailed uh, summary again because I think it's time to make it now again. Then you see that he already mentioned that index fund the trend towards mindless investing is something to be worried about. It didn't happen because since 1990 stocks went just up, what is this, 10x and more, but there are things that might impact all these things, starting from demographics. So as population gets older and older, there will be more sellers than buyers. This is the US, the situation in Europe isn't that good, so you have still a lot of young population that might replace these sellers, but it will be tricky. For the last 50 years, there were mostly buyers, now things might revert. Then also, when things are good, investors simply choose index funds. And the better things were, as stocks were going higher and higher, the more investors chose index funds and active funds had seen outflows. Also now, 2021, SAP was going up, up and up, and everybody was going on that train of index funds because stocks can only go up. However, that idea doesn't really work always. We see in Japan that the Japanese central bank had to intervene buying ETFs to keep that market stable, push it higher, and now they have a 500 billion problem as they cannot dump those. And let me tell you a little secret, maybe you don't know it, but when governments start owning real assets, that's called communism. But don't, don't don't listen to me and don't tell anybody I told you that. But if we look at the federal balance sheet, helping in this case treasuries and the governments, some mortgage-backed securities, but it is booming. And if we compare the effective federal funds rate, 1.21 here, with inflation at 9 point, it's still real rates are negative minus 8%, which is insane. Therefore, we can say that the monetary policy is extremely stimulative also for index fund investments as everybody is going into those index funds passive. The bubble is just getting bigger, 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 bigger and bigger. And the question on investing ahead is if that bubble pops, we are in big, big trouble. And as Seth Klarman says, mindless investing, you know, whenever you do something that's mindless, then you are in trouble. And investing, in my opinion, is about fundamentals. And if I invest in the S&P 500 with a 1.66% dividend, that's what I have to expect in the long term. That's it, 1.66. That's not much, especially with a negative real yield of minus eight. Of course, they say they will increase real rates and everything, but if dividend yield goes to free, I lose 50% as the S&P 500 crashes. So if we go to the S&P 500, now is 1.6%. If it goes to 3.2, if that is the normal 
rate, this has to be half. This is then 1,900. So another 50% down is possible. And that would be very, very ugly for those expecting markets to go just up, decades of just up ahead, no matter what, no matter what. And I really wanted to make this video because Dark Knight, if he resurrects, he really has a point just to think about that the world going forward might not be equal to the world we have had in the last 40 years. Before that it has been different. I hope nothing happens. I really hope that this video ages like milk and that over the next 40 years things just keep going up, up and up and I do a lot of work and everything and I just barely outperform the market. I hope that. I certainly don't hope to see everything down 50% decades of no growth like we have seen in the past so I hope it doesn't happen unfortunately I feel it will happen so that's something the only thing I can do is continue educating so subscribe for that smash that like button check what I do my hour analysis my premium analysis and I'll see you in the next video